Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcomed back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Righteous Force, Flatsoid, Chocolate Sane, Arwin and Tenth Man. Good to have you all. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good, good morning. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Now we have got some slight issues with Discord at the moment, so I'm going to hope that I can actually resolve those in the next few minutes as I've literally just downloaded the application version rather than the desktop version or the other way around, whichever it may be. Uh, in the meantime, over the last six or seven shows, we've been covering the housekeeping questions individually. So I'm going to hopefully open this particular show with one that keeps the conversation going for quite a significant amount of time while I fiddle with Discord. So I'll ask the question first of all. I don't think we've got a Discord panel to ask it to, but there we go, such is life. I will hopefully get that sorted on soon. Any evidence that you can have gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container? That's the housekeeping question first and foremost. It seems such a conceptual question in the first place. It's like a thought experiment. He's he's pre he's presupposing it. Oh, there we go. Not me. Can you hear me in Discord? Wait, 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 wait. No, but there's a lot of examples on, of gas yes, pressure. Yeah, yeah we hear you. We hear you. Yes, Excellent. So, any evidence that you can have gas pressure without a container is the housekeeping question that we're going to be covering today. Anybody in Discord got an answer before we move on and dissect it? No. Yeah, fight, fight the flat air, show the video. <laughs> feel, fill us in, feel free. Yeah, he showed gas pressure in a vacuum chamber. Sorry, gas pressure without a container is what we're after. Did you say vacuum chamber? I think that chamber falls under the category container as well. So. Yes, it would. Uh, anything else other than a good demonstration of gas pressure in a container? To answer the question of gas pressure without a container? Given that there's a fundamentalist religious zealot, a belief that we have a sky vacuum with no containment, keeping the gas here. Okay, and to contently say that there isn't anybody with any demonstrations of gas pressure without a container, because it's a violation of a natural law. It's a necessary antecedent. You need a surface area to press on to have gas pressure in the first instance. Gas by its nature will disperse, fill the available volume. The available volume Have you seen the... Go on. The pillars of life. Have I seen the what, sorry? The Pillars of Life. The Pillars of Life. Fill me in. Yes. It's a nebula. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I've seen pictures of it. Where, where is that nebula? Hang on, hang on. 
Stop interrupting him. He's got about five words oh. out. Bloody hellfire. Go ahead, Highlander. I'll try and keep him off Nathan. your back. Nathan, you always say we see it because it's there. Yeah. So we see it, so it's there. Yeah. <laughs> and? Right. Well, if that's gas and space. Oh, sorry. If that's gas. So what, you're going to presuppose it's gas and tell me that it's gas, that it's not dispersing into the vacuum that it's surrounding. So it started off as just a picture of some thing that we've given a name, Pillars of Life. Now, if it's a gas, what, what do you mean if it's a gas? If you presuppose it's gas, it's not dispersing into the gas vacuum. What? We don't need to presuppose that, though, do we? You've just presupposed that, haven't you, Highlander? Is, is that not what a nebula is made of? How the fuck would I know? Have you been there? What is a nebula? Yeah. What? How the hell do you know what it is? You've been there, have you? Yeah. No, you haven't. <laughs> You've looked at a light in the sky wow. and decided in it's your gas. Dreams? Sorry, let's just get it clear. You or nobody else has been to the Pillars of Life. It's claimed by your religion to be a gas. That doesn't mean it is. That's just your fundamentalist religious belief about what that light in the sky is. Like all the other lights in the sky, you just decide a gas is. For no reason other than you've just decided it's going to be a gas in a vacuum, not dispersing, so, violating so, natural law. You've decided that. They're just, they're just lights then. I don't know. Yeah, as far as I can tell, they're apparently just lights. Right, so if you don't know what they are, how can you say it's not gas? That's an argument from ignorance fallacy. Or just like your black swan. Uh, no. Sorry, what, what's this now? A false equivalence? <laughs> Sorry, are you done? Pillars of life aren't made of gas. You've just decided that. And now you're asking me to defend your religious belief that this light in the sky is actually a gas not dispersing into a vacuum. So let's stick with that. I did. Let's stick with that. Why would you just decide that some light in the sky is something that's violating natural law, i.e. the second law of thermodynamics? Why would you just decide that? And then ask me to defend your bloody religious belief in that light being a gas, not dispersing as per a law of nature. Why would you do that? Highlander, this is another example of you presupposing something like we were talking about earlier. The other math you asked about what are you presupposing? It's another. Yeah. He tried to sneak it in there quickly. He didn't even warn us. Adam. Afternoon, guys. Adam. Afternoon. So maybe you've got a bit of take on this just to segue away. I think we've given Pylander enough punishment. We're talking about gas pressure without any container, Adam. Now, I just want to hear your thoughts. Well, fortunately, container is kind of the thing that defines your gas pressure, its surface area. Um, it is probably the necessary antecedent for you to have. Pressure is something for it to bounce back off, back at you to create the pressure. Where we were heading, or...? <laughs> but what about all the close-ups we get to see of those nebulas in Star Trek? Mm. Can't be happening in a vacuum, can it? Oh. <laughs> ask, Hi ask Highlander, he's been there. Right. <laughs> this is what it's gotten to, that you guys will say you've been to nebulas and been in space. I mean, it's already... <laughs> your arguments have already reached joke level. So, I mean, there there is the possibility, Chocolate, that whatever you're looking at has a completely different set of physics that is in no way comparable to anything that we register or measure on Earth. Um, but then you're off to Narnia, aren't you? But if you're going to judge these phenomena with standards of what we know physics does in reality, then we have to apply a certain level of logic to say, no, that can't be a floating gas cloud in the middle of a vacuum, can it? Yeah, I agree. 
especially when they can't come up with an experiment that would prove such a thing can happen here where we all live in the first place. But then they just expect us to say, oh, well, can't happen here, but it's got to be able to happen there because that's what it is. Because I believe that's what it is. That's what it's doing. Fundamentalist belief. I still don't understand why they haven't shifted at some point to just state like, no, yeah, it's all filled with gas. Why not? You know, they're already twisting so many readings and output in order to get things the way they are. Why didn't they just switch it to that? I, I Yeah, they could still say, nah, it's just not lit up. You just don't see it or blah, whatever. I don't know. Maybe it was just so broken that at some point they just stopped attempting to fix it. Just thought, nah, we'll just leave the broken bits out uh, for the religious fanatics to defend. I don't know. Just in my mind, I could conceptualize it in such a, in a less broken way, you know, or at least attempt it, but it's not been done. I don't understand. It's a sad state of affairs, right? Because they've left them with basically the worst, the worst uh, narrative in the world to have to defend. And then they got people that you know want to help them defend it, and will do things like create a video, call it a uh, gas pressure without a container, <laughs> and then have two containers in it. So that's fun. <laughs> I mean. Right. I I love to hear about the video that uh this guy made fight the tight shirt as uh asserted by Highlander. That'd be cool. I'd like to hear some detail about it. So it was just a quick oh this guy made a video. Then what? He dropped off. What happened? <laughs> where where you go, Highlander? I'm still here. I lost my connection for a bit. Damn, those damn satellites, man. Welcome back. Yeah, your uh, communication balloons don't float over the north of Scotland, unfortunately. Yeah, those Pardon damn me. satellites don't point. like Scotland. Too many mountains. Oh, wait. Weren't satellites supposed to be above you? Hmm. Yeah, I, I think the whole point of this experiment is to see how much they can get away with. They can just put out as much nonsense as possible and still people will just accept it. I bet people are sitting around the room like, let's see how far we can push this. Anybody else in Discord maybe know how we could have gas pressure without a container somehow? I've only seen examples with containers, so I couldn't tell you. What about the whole plasmoid thing? No, I remember Ballers trying to forward that as a supposed uh, claim gas pressure without a container how about that you guys completely abandoned that don't think that's good anymore it's not but you know that usually doesn't mean that ballers then stop using the argument so hello hey I was thinking, I was going to say something when you guys were talking about the satellites, but I had my mic flipped up. And did you guys see Globusters talk about how they're trying to bring internet in rural areas with high altitude balloons? Yeah, Google Loon. Google Loon, Google Loon. They're good for them, man. Hey, functional is functional, so why not? Who needs freaking satellites, you know? Our beef isn't with satellites. Our beef is with space. 
If the satellites are claimed to be orbiting in space, then you've got a begging of the question fallacy of orbits, the presupposition that they're falling around a spherical Earth, and you've got a begging the question fallacy that violates natural law in the form of a sky vacuum for them to reside in. So, satellites, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm sure we can have balloons floating above us that maybe carry communications equipment. Great. Doesn't mean space but is this real. Was... Doesn't mean orbits are real. But this was demonstrated by a company and they were like showing a big presentation on it and how they were doing it and how they were achieving it. And so it wasn't like some secret thing that flat earthers are coming up with. It was oh. a company actually showing it and explaining it in detail. So that was interesting. Can't lie about space forever. Got to have an overlap period. If they're finding it useful to launch balloons as they were when they were claiming they were in space, presumably they're still just as useful, but they can't lie about them being in space anymore, so they just disclose the fact they're going up on balloons. They're still doing the exact same job. Not yeah, they'll, they'll just they'll, they'll they'll claim it's cheaper. it's cheaper to do it this way and then uh, say that some of them are still actually in space orbiting. We just don't know which ones. Well, if it's cheaper to do it that way, then why do we even have satellites in the orbits to begin with? If it's no, that's just what they'll claim. Range. I'm sorry, I cut somebody off. That's all right, I'm going to do a shout out anyway to my latest channel member, Doug Marshall, woo -woo -woo, who's joined as a penguin. So thank you very much for joining. I'm also going to do a whole shout out bunch a bunch of shout outs to all of the people who've joined as hyenas. So shout out to, it's a fairly long list, Ali B, Elijah Freeman, Light Energy, Clearly, Rakia Life, Grave Dodger, Silver Umbrella, Pilton Pop, Jordan for America, Chow Young Cat, Unicorn Laser Eyes, Del West Watson, and Super Looming Hyena. So those are all the people who are hyena channel members. Thank you very much indeed to all of you. Adam, are you still around? No, he's not, clearly. As you were. Sorry, mate. Yeah, I am. I'm just pottering and trying not to make a noise when I'm doing so. So, just to dive to the mic. Um, yes, sir. When you've got a chance in the next few days, there's no rush. Um, for some reason, in disc, uh, what is, what's it called? OBS. I can't now get the. Uh, the list of participants in Discord to appear on screen. So I've just been faddling, fiddling and faffing and I can't get to do it. Is that something you can help me with? Don't worry if it's if it's not something you yeah, know. Yeah, we, we need to download the app thing, don't we? Um, yeah, I'll have to have a word with Betty, but yeah, it should be. You mean the overlay for the name, didn't that? What I was doing before was just having it as a window and then in OBS I'd say, go to that, that particular window and take this section of it. And that's okay. how I do it. Whereas for, with, for the app, it doesn't seem to want to do it. Okay. If you use the app, you have to program it in to, to just take it and it just gives you the information so you haven't got to oh. steal a bit. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we'll have a play later. Yeah. No worries. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, that's what the problem is. So I have to do it differently if it's the app version. Fine, that's all I needed to know. Yeah. yeah. Annoying as well. I can't make it as small. Oh, well. Hey-ho, technical life. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sorry, I was just, just doing a reference for someone. So it's trying to be Good. quiet so you don't hear my keyboard worrying like Tony. Fair enough. I could just slide it into the frame of the screen, but it just looks a bit of a mess, so I don't think I'll do that. Now you've got to make it look pretty. Yeah, I'm fussy about these things. I I'm in the middle of... Um, I was supposed to do it on Friday. Um, do the new... Uh, I've done. I've done a whole load of new OBS. Because so now John's plumbing is is fixed. He's officially. I'm getting rid of the plumbing page, um, which is all the copper piping. So I'm doing a nice magnetics one for Cammy and Zach. So uh, that was supposed to go out Friday, but my literally ten minutes before I was meant to air, mate, my computer just blew. Just just. Boom. So I'm um, apparently got moisture on my motherboard. Oh dear. It's being rebuilt now. A new motherboard coming, so yeah. Hopefully, I'll have new OBS sets up by Friday as well. So excellent. <laughs> Should 
trimmed out yesterday's little uh, back and forth with the Orthodox. Yeah, I, was, I thought you were starting at three. I was just listening to that and then saw you were on, so, yeah. Yeah, I just I couldn't be bothered to reset the time, so when there was all these technical issues with Discord and I couldn't get it to work, I just restart the computer, thinking, ah, oh, fine, I'll just end that at recording and punt it out separately. But then when I restarted, it just didn't work, so... Um, Righteous suggested downloading the app version, which I did whilst launching the live show. There's a few bits of... I'm a bit behind the times. I noticed John Ford did a Black Swan um, piece a day or two ago. I only spotted it yesterday, but nice of him to pick it up and run with it. I like yeah. his stuff. He's not someone I've ever chatted about a couple of times interacted, but always watch his stuff. Yeah, one of other. Where do you chat with John? I like Taboo Conspiracy's version because he's like, no, it's not a black swan, it's an everyday swan. We see this all the time, and this is what's normal. Yeah, tell that to the dude that posted the exact same oil platforms over and over again in my comment section saying, explain this. And yeah, typically what I'd have just done is. Put a little white swan underneath because it all makes nice logical sense. Doesn't even take 10 seconds to respond saying white swan. But we have our own side weakening our argument. So it's far more difficult to do that. Given that our own side saying no, it's an everyday occurrence that we have geometric impossibilities for horizons. Yeah, that's, that's the reason why we argue with them about it being a sphere edge in the way of stuff. Because it's just so common that we have geometric impossibilities. They're everyday occurrences, apparently, according to her own bloody side. It does depress me. Yesterday, I was like, no, I want to see this from their point of view. I want to be neutral. Woke up this morning and got that, like I say, endless bloody repetitive comments from somebody posting a video that's showing the oil platforms with a horizon in front of them. And literally all that went through my head is, why is it my own side is saying that your geometric impossibility is an everyday occurrence when you wouldn't even be calling it a white swan? if we hadn't first labelled it black swan. You know, that it'd be silly to label horizon swans. There's no there's no logical reason to do so. And to argue that it's an everyday occurrence that you have globe debunking horizons is to me slightly absurd. At the time I was like, oh yeah, I'll believe you if you say that it's just an everyday occurrence that we see horizons way off further in the distance than they should be. But then after again after sleeping about it, I thought, well, Ranty goes out day after day after day after day and he's not catching daily occurrences of geometric impossibilities. He'll catch it on a nice clear day, if the tide's nice and calm. Well, yeah, because he can see further and there's less interference in the weather and it's nice and clear and, you know, all things being right, he can see much, much further. The clearer the day, the further you'll see. But not every day is a clear day. So not every day is an, an everyday occurrence that you get these geometric impossibilities. You can get, You can get them if you're persistent and you go out and you wait for a nice clear day. Because the Earth is obviously and observably flat. You just need clear weather to see it. So, yeah, I'll agree with that. But that's just the same as saying the black swans aren't that uncommon as opposed to rearranging the logical consistency and saying, actually, these are white swans, these these geometric impossibilities for horizons. They're like an everyday thing. Well, no, they're not. Why the hell would we be arguing this subject if they were an everyday occurrence? No one would ever take a picture of anything at the horizon and go, there you go, I can extrapolate ball from that. It never happen, but it does. We've spent the last three years arguing with them about how it's a geometric edge obscuring a boat in the distance, or obscuring an oil platform, or obscuring a clock, or obscuring anything else for that matter. That's all we ever argue about, and they've got a calculator to argue with it about that very subject. Yet we, we take, uh, or QE takes the time and effort to formulate a logical consistency, happens to involve swans, and point out that the, the status quo, the standard argument, with this picture on screen now, Where's the bottom of the turbines? It's behind the edge, isn't it? Behind the edge of my sphere. <laughs> yeah, that's what we get. Because they're just going to look at this picture and say that's the edge of my sphere blocking it. So when you offer up a debunking that absolutely obliterates that and shows that you've got a geometric impossibility for a horizon, that debunks the notion that all horizons are geometric in any way, shape or form. And they can't fit between being geometric and being non-geometric. It doesn't work like that. Once you show it's the not actual location we call the horizon, redundant, it's not actual by definition. It's apparent by definition. So 
We don't no, no longer need to argue about this position on screen now being the physical edge of a sphere. It isn't. We debunk the notion of it being a geometric horizon. The fact that you can quite commonly extrapolate out this information. To be perfectly honest, this, that's not true for this information. There's, a, there's an island in the distance that doesn't work in the curve calculator either. It's far too far beyond their presupposed Earth curve. Edge! The bit we've debunked with the black swan. So, to those of you on our side, without being too harsh, actually understand the argument and how it debunks the notion we have a geometric sphere edge before saying, oh no, seeing geometric debunking sphere edges in the form of non-possible horizons for a sphere is actually quite common. Why go to that effort to dilute the argument? It just makes no sense. That's a fair point. I, I, I think I just it meant that, uh, I read it more as uh, you know, look, oil rig, no explanation okay, needed. This happens a, a, a all the time. Why? Why are we talking about it? Yeah. Look, if I may, for a second, I actually talked to Karen B. I also reported on the early word show. They, or at least Karen, because I, I haven't spoken to anybody else about it, but she just. She didn't really get the the emphasis that we're laying. We're laying an emphasis on the concept of the black swan and the yeah. historical reference. And she didn't get that. She didn't fully see the complete context of it because, and here's here's why, she hasn't watched the debates or ballbusters at all. She kind of avoided it because of the atmosphere. That's what she told me. So she literally just overlooked it. It's a misunderstanding. What's the feeling I don't know I'm about getting the other guy. Way. I don't know about the oh, other guy. I thought you'd make your point. You'd done your stopping again. Sorry. Sorry? I, said, no, I, 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 I started talking, but you're doing your I've semi stopped for, so I apologize for interrupting. Go ahead, Adam. Did, did you ask me you wanted to actually? Yeah, I was, I was just going to agree with Owen. That, that, that summary he's just given there is kind of the, the feeling I'm getting, Owen, that. The comment we're getting is either lack of understanding of the the nuances of what's being said with regards to the murder of Torrance, or arguing about the relevance of whether the black swan analogy fits this seems to be the bigger point that these people are grasping the black swan, they're looking it up on the interweb, um, seeing the analogy and seeing different descriptions of the analogy and arguing that that against that, as opposed to like you just said there, looking into the actual quality of what we got which is what what qe's crafted with all the other stuff is to put it into a logical consistency of, of the moments tolerance so that it's undebunkable via their model it destroys their model that's the the power of this and yes right you can take every single sodding picture right and and apply it that is the genius of it but we're not saying this one picture is the only one, is the only black swan we're set. But the point is, is the Modens Tolland arguments not to focus on drilling down into black swan analogies that you read mm -hmm. elsewhere and try, trying to apply it to that. Look at the power of the argument that you've been given. I'll right. try and break it down again. The white swan, black swan analogy is to say that most people think that the Swan population is all white. And the analogy, most people think we have a horizon that is the demarca demarcation point of the edge of a sphere. I'll say that again, first half. The assumption that all swans are white is the assumption that all horizons are geometric sphere edges. Now, we know this because we've argued about it since we got here. Whether or not it bends, how much it bends, how much is stuff being obstructed by it. That's the globe head's default position. And most people think the Earth's a sphere. So most people think all swans are white. By analogy, all horizons are geometric. This horizon on screen has been extensively argued about how much the line that we call the horizon is obscuring the north end of the Isle of Man. Because the baseline assumption for that argument was that this is 
a white swan commoner garden obstructing geometric horizon that's the default position all white swans all geometric horizons now as soon as you show one black swan and demonstrate in analogy we don't have a geometric horizon it's not the leading edge of a sphere by limitation it couldn't be any further than the mathematics and geometry layout if you show one that's beyond that the black swan you automatically debunk the notion that we have a demarcation point for the leading edge of their geometric model it's debunked now that isn't to say that there aren't tens of thousands of images in people's possessions that also categorically show we do not have a geometric demarcation sphere edge for a horizon but that doesn't mean that the commoner garden understanding is that the horizon's actually beyond a geometric position the assumption is that it's geometric ergo white swans are the standard position geometric horizons we have shown that they're not with what could be if it was rare the exception to the rule which would be the black swan but in this instance you've got geometric physicality being broken once it's broken it doesn't suddenly go back together the following day when they show you a horizon in front of the platforms or a horizon in front of whatever else you've got to refer to as your black swan they are still black swans until the day that everyone understands the earth is flat until that day they're black swans i'm afraid reversing the analogy and taking away its logical consistency presumably because you don't understand the actual analogy and saying well it's really common we can see further than they claim on a sphere the only reason you'd have to disclaim further than they disclaim on a sphere is because how far you can see on a sphere to the horizon is the standard the white swan now We've given it by analogy because if you just give modus tollens, the logical consistency, there's nothing to wrap your head around in analogy. It's surplus. It's not necessarily needed. It's redundant. You don't need a black swan analogy. But when you coin a phrase and give it a label, suddenly it appeals to a different part of people's brain. Oh, that's the black swan image. As opposed to the image of the two oil rigs with the horizon in a position that's geometrically impossible for a reification of a sphere model. The accurate description of the proof. But black swan's a lot more catchy. And it has an analogy that goes along it that's directly comparable to the modus tollens analogy. Uh, logical consistency. Now, for all of you just go, I don't see what the big deal is with this picture. Well, try and pay a bit more attention. Right. I can perfectly explain how they've misinterpreted it because it's like this. What? These people, no, but I, I'm with you. I'm absolutely, you're, you were totally correct, Nathan. But the problem is there's flat earthers out there that kind of already are so used to, as it were, looking at black swans that they forgot to realize that most people don't see that. See? So they kind of, wrongly laid the emphasis on like what is so special about this black swan when there's black swans all over the place so they overlooked the actual point of qe bringing it forth as he does and us all emphasize they overlooked the point that it's not aimed at flat earthers really it's aimed at the general public more or <clears> the ballers radio it's aimed, it's aimed at de de debunking an assertion we have a geometric sphere for a world that's what it's addressed at. Right. But it's so oh, yeah, natural for them to already know that, kind of, that they overlook the point of why we did it, as it were. And then but, they responded laying the emphasis on the wrong thing. And that's really what happened. That's the mistake that happened. Wait a second. I just come in on this late. Um, what happened again? Again, Echo. Echo, sorry. We're just discussing the uh, the feedback that Orwin's managed to gather. 
Yeah, I think that because taboo conspiracy is such on another level than most people, he's a little bit few hurdles past to where a lot of people are. He's making the whole black uh, swan argument into an offensive move as opposed to a defensive move. If, if that makes any sense. I don't know about taboo conspiracy. I only talk to Karen B, so I can only talk for her. Could, yeah, but you when you're so Karen? used to seeing black not... swans, it becomes normal because that's what we're used to, but not what most people are used to. Yeah, I agree. And when the world sees it the way we do, then yeah, 20 years from now, maybe we yeah. can start calling them white Too swans. Sure. But for now, after people don't understand the analogy, another third of the people don't understand the actual yeah. example and the analogy. So is it time to convolute down something that's not overly complicated but you've got to offer it in a certain format with a certain amount of heritage information so that it's undebunkable but there we go radio yeah, check no, yeah uh, you're good john it's an icon it's an icon that'll appeal more widely like you said nathan and that's just correct unfortunately with it also becomes slight proneness to misunderstanding the icon in the first place, but that's what happens. That's oh, all right. Wait a second. What, can somebody tell me what happened? Oh, geez. Uh, I'll come in on the hangout. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Nathan, we were getting echo coming from the first side. Echo coming all from right, what? I didn't hear anyone. Sorry. Yeah, it's yeah, echoey on Discord side. Okay, I'll I'll figure that out at a later date. Uh, John got in the Google panel here. Sorry about that, guys. I've got technical issues with, with Discord. Discord. That's all. Discord? Sorry, John. Second. Radio it's check. Only when Discord... We can hear you, John. Thanks for fuck's sake, man. Oh. All right. What happened? We're just going over. I explained that yesterday I was trying to empathize with the people who turned Black Swan into commoner garden white swans and i'm saying well yeah i can understand you seeing this all the time and you know that might be the case but then i woke up this morning to a, a spam commenter charging me with explaining a white swan you know exactly the same platform split with a horizon in front of them and on the first reply to the spam comment i just put a white swan and what immediately went through my mind is oh th this was nice and simple and concise so i can just call it a white swan until someone comes along and says your own side's calling the other thing a white swan so what's this a black swan now i mean what the fuck you know you're like ah oh, this is annoying and suddenly i felt a bit more empathy for you qe rather than trying to get to the bottom of well it's not that big a deal they're just saying it's really common to see geometric possibilities for horizons now number one that's not the case number two the entire western world thinks they live on a bloody sphere and the most standard status quo is to assert that the horizon we see is the geometric edge of a sphere so there's nothing wrong with what you've asserted in terms of describing white swans as the claim to be geometric horizons and the black swan being the geometric impossibility. So to dilute and change it is actually quite frustrating. Now, yesterday, the empathy was running for those of them who were saying, oh, well, I don't see what the big deal is. Well, the big deal is we've debunked the idea that we live on a sphere with geometry. That's a pretty big deal. Maybe pay a bit more attention to it rather than changing it for no reason. And the same applies to Ben. I mean, I'm a bit disappointed in him. It's like, why have you done this? Now, Arwen's justification is to say, well, he's so used to seeing these horizons that to him it's common. It's like, are we forgetting what argument we're in and that we're very much in the minority and that the majority of people still believe that the edge of their sphere is represented by this horizon you're now calling common as muck? When... Even if I try and side with Ben, it's not common. The guy who went out and got this took a long time trying to achieve it. Same with Ranty. I know how long it takes to get these black swans. So it's not an everyday occurrence at all. That's nonsense. So there's on many levels, I just think, what the hell are these people doing? I know what they're doing. Ben doesn't understand the argument. I want to get back to what Arwen said. What was Karen's excuse again? Uh... She literally didn't understand the the oh. historical reference because she hasn't watched any of the Ballbusters or Flat Earth debates. She lit because she stayed away. So I had to explain it to her yeah, on Skype. I I put it. I presented oh. it earlier, oh. and then she got it. 
Stop. What? Please. All I wanted to know. Okay, wait a second. Let me get this straight. She goes on two shows, three counting last night. I didn't watch it. I heard people talking about it in Master B's. Last night was a non-pissed off night, so I didn't go over there. So it, let me get this straight. She goes on two shows with countless people watching, a lot flat earthers, and she's discussing something she doesn't understand. Yep. So how does that not make her a pretender clown, please? Well, it makes her look really silly because she overlooked the entire flat premise. Earth. Yeah, but it, it's called a mistake. Does she understand? A she, was, she wasn't informed. Shut up. Does she understand? Don't tell me to shut up, John. I'm tired of listening to you monologue. Excuse me, you're you're no, having a conversation no, no, no. with me. Can I respond without you immediately interrupting every time? Do you got diarrhea of the mouth? My word. Now, I'll ask the question again, please. So you're telling me her excuses. She goes on three shows discussing an argument that she doesn't understand. How does that not make her a class A certified pretender clown? So please, I'm all ears. Oh, it's called making a mistake. I've done it in the past. Doctor, uh, remember the whole gravity time? Does that make me a pretender clown? No, it's up to Karen now to do with it whatever she wants. Uh, either recognize like, oh yeah, I, I actually did overlook the, the real backdrop premise of the entire argument. Didn't see it. And that made me look kind of silly. Because she thought it was about the picture. Can I have somebody else other than Arwen? Oh, well, somebody else talked to her yesterday. So Everyone well, just with heard me. the story. I'm looking for somebody else to answer the question for me. Thank got, a, got a super chat that might address it. So shout out to Flatulent Unicorn. who says, Karen B. Thick. Hashtag Black Swan. Also, is it wits it gets it? Says, Globebuster here. Million percent support of Black Swan. And then, uh, thank you very much for your super chat. Wits it gets it. And also, MC Universe Sacred Truth Seeker. I'm really sorry. You're the last one. I'll see if I can scroll up to find your super chat. Just bear with me, guys, on the panel. Hopefully, I can find this super chat to actually read it out. If not, uh, it's too far up. I'm really sorry, MC Universe Sacred Truth Seeker. I can't read it. If someone else super chats, I will read it out, though. Thank you very much for your support. Oh, Emma UK, thank you. <laughs> I'll read that one before it goes. She says, remember, you are all awesome. Thank you very much, Emma UK. Subscribe to her today. Click on those buttons. MC Universe, Sacred Truth Keeper says, the problem is Black Swan sounds just like one. Anybody follow that? The problem is Black Swan sounds just like one. Because swans are not pretty to listen to. They're, they're squawky and annoying. Oh, right. Right. Yeah, oh, the God. An attack video, remember? I don't know if they're squawky and annoying. There's loads of swans in my local park, which I go to regularly with my kids. And they're very tranquil. Generally, unless you piss them off, they're very tranquil. And even if you do piss them off, they just chase after you. But they're not squawking and making annoying noises. They're really, be really beautiful creatures. Anyway, <laughs> no, I, I agree. I, yeah, they're just. I think that I think that was the point of the super chat. Fair okay, enough. please, anyone with an answer to my question, please. Your question is: If no, she's gone on yeah, two no, shows, it sounds, she should have known what she's talking about. The question is: If she's gone on two shows talked about the subject but doesn't actually know what she's talking about how is she not a pretender clown is that correct yes well i can't not say she isn't because you can't just take something like this very important proof and then just run with it having not really got a firm grip on what it is so on the same hand nathan you just already explained that because of the icon of the swan it is a little bit easy to misinterpret it's still dumb though it's still sloppy okay know? hold on a second the problem so, the problem sorry, is sorry hold on so this, this hold on guys 
Witsit gets it. I think he is actually on Globusters show. He's one of the Globusters from what I'm gleaming here. So he says, I'll bring it up on the next show to clear it up. I support the Black Swan analogy a thousand percent. I think it's brilliant. Shout out to QE. And from his last super chat, I think Witsit gets it is actually one of the Globusters. Maybe someone in the chat can fill me in. Well, if that's the same Witsit gets it, I was just in 24 7 uh, Discord before I came in here, and he was in there flat smacking with the Black Swan. <laughs> so, if, he he is when he he is, a... if that's the same guy, then yeah, good ship, bro. He said he's a Globuster. Yeah, he's a bust. Is he really? <laughs> I didn't know that. And, yeah, and she so... didn't watch the show. Why? Kish Wizzy says, yeah, brand new Globuster. Bob recruits so yeah, yeah, definitely a Globuster. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Now, uh, that's that made my day. I know Bob gets this, and this Witsit guy gets it. So they're going to be discussing it on Globusters. This is this is a result. I've got goosebumps. Um, <laughs> Yay! Bob definitely it, gets it. Mean, it. It's I'm funny. Talking to Bob about it, Nathan, and he totally gets it. And, and we discussed it on the, Friday. The, the Friday show with Cammy, and I know Bob was in the background, and we spoke to him off it. I, I know the guys. Yeah, the Bob I, I realise that. He's best. Just, Hold on one second, Dale Procurelia. Hold on. <laughs> he's, he's talked about it in the chat. I know Bob gets it. I, I, I mentioned it yesterday. So, you know, this is just... Let's not be too harsh on Karen. She just didn't get it. And she's maybe been caught up in talking about it. Let's just give her the benefit of the doubt. Well, that's yeah, what the, I got. The problem, is, so, yeah. the problem is that she's just not up to date with the Flat Earth debate. Yeah, that's the, the real the, problem here. Karen's just and, not and up to would, date with the would, flat Earth I would debate. say that the that's most likely that, what the that problem is. Globers but she are admitted she admitted to me that she didn't watch it because she didn't like it. So, so and and that she's not that up to date. So. Hang on, am I not coming? Sorry, yeah, we're I hear you, Borikwa. Go, no, Bar Bar Go ahead. What I was saying is that uh, what the best part of the conversation of the Black Swan is that. The Glovers definitely are getting it because they're definitely uh, backing down on their argument of the uh, geometrical sphere. The right. Glovers get it no end because they've spent the past five years pointing this edge out to us. They know how devastating it is. That's oh, why we've had yeah. the waffle we've had. Yeah, they know they're screwed. As Albuquerque has just pointed out, you're in a situation where they're having to deny geometry. Well, what does that mean? Their whole religion is about having geometry. And they're having to deny it. Didn't do people not realise how important this is? We've literally got to the point where we're having our opponent having to say, No, nah, that's not a, a geometric edge. You know, boom! Welcome to Flat Earth, mate. But it's the fact that they have to contradict every previous statement the previous the rumpus is a great example to defend this position now they're having they just contradict everything they've stood by in the past every excuse they've given us all the isle of man stuff all of it's now being contradicted by them because apparently geometry doesn't exist anymore the only way they can get around it with, with all this black swan talk did here, anyone or did you guys already talk about the flat earth comment on uh, the super bowl or in the super bowl game yeah. what um yeah there was a, for one of the commercials mentioned flat earth was it when there was <laughs> like a, a medieval fat woman saying yeah they used to think yes, yes. Was flat. wow yeah what would what would what did people do before alexa they gossip about flat earth is apparently what they did well, no, I just see that as part of the ridicule. Oh, yeah, so, sure. Alexa, gotta fix uh, it. Right, right. Yeah, the, and, yeah, the witch without the pants. Or the, yeah, mind. exactly. It's part of the ridicule. <laughs> like, they don't know. All right, back to the topic. So, she said that she didn't, she doesn't like it. Is that what I heard? No, the she show. doesn't like the atmosphere in the show. And she, she doesn't really oh. like people all that much. So, oh, so that causes no, not to so listen to like, but she's a snowflake too, right? She's a woman. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. War is off. There is no more war because she just performed seppuku on her own self. <laughs> Thank right. you very much. 
Good. That's good. Well, let's keep it real, right? We know that not everybody watches the show. People all have feelings and all this other shit. So it makes sense that somebody might not watch the show, might not understand the level that this argument has brought, you know, the 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 entire thing too. So uh, I mean, look. Oh. And I know, and I know, being that I know Karen B, she's cool, and I've, you know, I respect her. And I think, yeah, she probably has been busy, you know, doing her thing and not really paying much mind because it doesn't sound like something that she would just offhand just dismiss, just not recognize how it's being pushed right now and why it's so important. Well, I'm wait, 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 hold the phone. Not everyone watches the show. What the hell? Not everyone has feelings. What What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? Shouty version. Oh, oh my hold, god! Hold on, That's Adam. They're they're, uh, they're trying to yell at me right now. <laughs> nice. John to... in me. Yeah. <laughs> or did we start at the same? Sorry, I didn't see John. I'm, I'm having to look away from the screen because I'm on backup computer. So sorry, John. Yeah. Wait, no, I'm sorry. I heard I somebody. Heard oh my god. I'm listening. It's it's hard to talk in here because we got people monologuing, right? Did I hear that it hurt her feelings? I didn't catch all of that. No, <clears throat> I didn't say that. I said not everybody watches the show. Some people might not like certain other people, and not everybody watches the show. So not everybody might not be up to speed on how important this is. That's all I'm saying. You know how it's all the more reason you gotta what, stay what up done. to date with the flat <clears throat> so, earth debate. Yeah, well, <laughs> not everybody does, right? Well, well okay, wait not... a second. Yeah. Second chocolate. She, okay, so you're telling me she didn't understand. She's not up to date with the flat earth debate, but she goes on two shows and talks about something that she doesn't understand. Yeah, um, see, see, look, yeah. the first time when I heard the the the, uh, the clip with Mark Sargent, it, it, he kind of just brought it up and she did. She kind of sounded like she didn't really know or didn't understand what was being said or she didn't realize what observation she contradicted herself. I think let's finish. You mean, yeah. Shut up, Arwen. You mean what I'm she just, contradicted herself? Yeah, I'm just saying it sounded like she didn't really understand the exact observation that was being spoken about. Like, she, you know, it was kind of like, okay, yeah, I, I don't know. That's that's what I'm getting from what I heard. That's all I can go by, right, is my experience. So that's what I heard. And then it was kind of the same thing the other day when when Ben, you know, did his little video. And, yeah, again, I'm obviously I'm disappointed by it that they didn't understand, but I'm not going to hold that against her and say, oh, that she's bad because she didn't understand the argument. It's very possible what she said was right. She didn't pay attention. She doesn't know how important it is. That's just my opinion. Hey. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay, everyone. I'd like to hear QE unimpeded this time so he doesn't get annoyed at everybody. Clearly, Chocolate's talking to QE. He's gathering the situation. Now I'm sure he wants to respond. Go ahead, QE. Prosecution rests. Hooray! The war Hooray. is over! The war it. is over! Excellent. Yeah, I mean, so but she's opening her mouth without, you know, in that conversation. Getting right. that echo. Shout out to Theo Megawerty who says, Black or white, don't kill the golden swan. Them eggs. Right on. Thank you for the super chat, Theo Megawerty. By the way, that Shout was a three reference. Remember it? Attack of the Machines on Zion. John is a machine, right? So, Whilst we're on that point, if I can maybe dip in now, there was, it is in response to what Chocolate's saying, and Chocolate's saying, saying. Um, <laughs> with, <laughs> um, with regards, Karen's uh, a figurehead, uh, and, and I think her admission 
is is probably reflective of of a lot of people's understanding and i think that's uh an opportunity as john's seeing there to say right okay it's not how we're seeing it let's take this as an opportunity to get the message out further and better understood but this this would seem a logical next step to me that we work on on that and if people are saying oh flat earth debates too shall we then i said i did uh, a piece on iron realm I, I don't think i shouted once um hopefully went through it in a calm manner nathan's mirrored it it's out there and i just say to people and please please have a good look at it and get your head around it this is a really powerful tool for us flat earthers whether we look at pictures and have done for years and see them as they really are we're not trying to convince ourselves here we've got a fantastic tool to convince people that look at these pictures and have always seen a geometric edge or always excused or tried to put in that like, and, and we've got an opportunity here i think to get a very powerful tool over to people and the response we've gathered is they're not understanding it and to me let's put some effort in to help them understand it I think it's with at least taboo conspiracy. It's like he's playing chess while Glovers are playing checkers. I mean, I get what he's saying. I think he understands it, but maybe he's just saying. No, he doesn't. I don't know. He's taking the offense. Maybe I should probably go watch it again then. No, he doesn't understand it. I could only draw that conclusion. As much as I really like Ben and I don't want to badmouth him, same goes for Karen. It's, it's something that you've got to check your own first. And if he understood it, he wouldn't be calling the black swan a commoner garden white swan. Because understanding the analogy and the example, Modus Tolens, wouldn't allow him to do so. So I could only draw that conclusion also, QE. Sorry, Ben. No, I hear you. It's fair. And it is annoying, I guess, because it's just helpful to just be all one-sided, at least on the same on on the flip side, no publicity is bad publicity. They're talking about it. Their misunderstanding is being addressed. Once they do understand it, I'm certain they're not going to be in any position to want to apologise for their misunderstanding. That's not that's not a necessity. But what is a necessity is understanding it and understanding how strong it is and why it's strong and how to defeat the bullshit rebuttals that you might have in regards to refraction or talking about the platforms themselves or when they actually concede, recognising that they're conceding, when they say, the horizon's looming above the horizon. And you say, ah, so not geometric then. Welcome to Flat Earth. Etc, etc. So understanding yeah. the argument and understanding where what seems, if you're not familiar with the argument, like suddenly they've got a defence, the horizon's looming above the horizon. Well, it's a non-sequitur fallacy. You can't loom the horizon above the horizon. But if you want to run with it, you can take it as the victory point. So it's not geometric then. Not your geometric it's sphere like, edge then. We win. Oh, you lose. The meme. Coriolis effect meme. where they're arguing for something that doesn't help their point. Well, maybe that's the whole thing, right? Maybe you don't notice how important it is until you argue with a globe defender about it and get them to try to explain it. And then watch in real time as they have to finagle their entire argument to try to make something seem substantial to give you an answer when they know they, they, they can't. So it's very possible that, you know, if unless you've argued it, at, it you know, officially, you just don't get it. So to read out this last Theo Megawerty super chat, the black swan only requires, or well, the black swan argument only requires the evidence of one black swan. What then shows is that there are black swans everywhere, but named it wrong. Yeah, exactly, Theo. So it's, it's just confused. His phraseology should be, black swans are really common. Now, if he'd have said it in that phraseology, I'd say, yeah, he absolutely understands the argument. And yeah, obviously they're common. We live on a flat plane. So you're going to see lots of examples of geometric impossibilities for horizons. They might be really common. It might be 50-50, black and white for all I know. But that doesn't make the common conception that all swans are white, all horizons are geometric, 
to suddenly need reversing in the analogy just demonstrates a lack of understanding of the actual modus tollens argument. But there we go, that's life. With that, I'll say if you are watching this on the Nathan Oakley premiering stream, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you're watching this live on the Nathan Oakley 1980 stream, then this is where we bid you farewell. A huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making this live show possible. Stay tuned if you're watching on the premiering stream. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Black Swan. There are many Black Swans, but this one is mine. I like that. <laughs> you came, someone in Discord came up with that. That was great. Yeah, just like in Full yeah. Metal Jacket. There are many that, Black that Swans, was... but this one is mine. <laughs> Our shape investigator props for that. Yeah, that was ace. And it's perfect. It's exactly right. So then it's to be expected that Karen B will look into the video that QE put, the collector's edition, at least that one, and get her story right. Can we at least expect that now? Hopefully. Arwen, can <laughs> you get that message to Karen B, please? Let's see if I can find the name of the YouTuber that I was talking about, the Australian guy. Hey, here we go. A fresh look at truth sorry there's no a fresh look at truth is the youtuber that i said had gone out and said hey i actually found one of my images that really triggered globe heads six months ago and i didn't realize the significance of it now here it is again and he puts it on screen this is a, 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 a demonstration of a black swan and he gives the distances to the things that are in the picture i think there are a couple of boats shows how he's got the distances shows where the horizon is and says that's a geometric impossibility. Black Swan. So, yeah, check him out. Black Fresh, Swan. Fresh Look of Truth is the name of the YouTuber. But you'll have to comment, and I pinned it on that last video from yesterday. <sighs> yeah, the Black Swan is, uh, as Black I was told Swan. yesterday, has picked up a bit of logos. I think Orwin knows about <laughs> what that what that is. Yep. <laughs> and they were whispering Black Swan like every time somebody said it. <laughs> uh, Black Swan is the new secret society. Black Swan. Yeah. <laughs> it's become the spirit animal of Flat Earth. <laughs> I, <love> it. <laughs> I, I like it. Especially the attack ones. I like those. I want <laughs> one now. <laughs> Sorry for jumping the on you. Next one's Arwen. only attack low. Arwen, sorry for jumping on you, man. You're just monologuing too much. I, I, I wanted to get my point out. Sorry. That's okay. I'm just glad that this uh, issue has been resolved because it got me kind of worried. It hasn't been resolved. She needs to come back and say the argument properly. That's when it's resolved. She doesn't need to do anything. She's not part of this. <laughs> she, 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 but she does. Yeah, well, I was going to kind of say the same hang thing. On, she, hang on, hang on. Okay, I'm going to separate myself from this stupidity. If you're going to comment on Mark Sargent's show that you don't know what it is and then identify the picture, the one that Ben showed, that was kind of weird. And then you're going to say it wrong. And then to Arwen in Skype for whatever time, okay, I got it wrong. I'll fix it. Okay, so fix it. Then say it right. But she didn't share. Yeah, but the, here's the difference, though, Tim. And you, you know, I'm going to keep it real with you. The difference would be is that that observation is not brand new, it's been done already. So there are probably people who know about that particular oil rig uh, observation. What's new about it is that it has now an argument, a modus tollens argument that has been placed upon it. Right, I, so that's that's very, that's the new variation. 
that we I'm got. Very, right now. very aware of that. Just go re listen to the Mark Sargent show and you'll see what I'm saying there. But that's not the point. The point is let bygones be bygones like everyone here wants. Let's get everyone on the correct argument. But to say I, I didn't pay enough attention and I probably talked out of turn is not resolved. The resolve is when you get it right. Okay, well, I think we should take a vote on it. Hold on. So all for letting bygones be bygones, type one in the chat. All for tying her to a stake and burning her, type two. <laughs> I think the root of the problem is from hearing Armin when he started talking about it was that Karen B hasn't been following Ballbusters and Nathan's show. So the root of the problem is this divide between Globusters and this side of the flat earth. And I think we should just, like Nathan says, get together again and kumbaya and all that stuff, no? Well, they have to first discover a science acumen collectively on the show. Once they do that, then sure, no, not a problem. Thanks. So anybody in Discord know why there's a horizon uh, almost nine further than nine miles away than where it's supposed to be geometrically? Right. All of you typing two in the chat, you're all going to hell. <laughs> 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 uh, the answer is probably because of looming. <laughs> gravity yeah, that that's pretty tough for them being that looming has nothing to do with the damn horizon <laughs> as far as the horizon is concerned so yeah that's a problem a, a yeah, of a way you know of how terrestrial nature. refraction works hey adam was talking yeah i was just thinking what nathan said there there's a good way if, if we can just ask people you know make sure we get the message over and then to check that they understand it, if we weigh them against that of a weight of a duck, and they weigh less than a duck, then we'll know that they understand it. And if they weigh more than the duck, then we burn them. <laughs> oh, it's the only way forward, Nathan. <laughs> Type number two. <laughs> oh. Yeah, as good as the argument is, they're just going to say refraction. Okay, let's take take that to its logical conclusion. So as soon as the fund asserts refraction, you've got a few avenues you can progress this argument through. The first would be to ask the fundy, so is the horizon looming above the horizon? When they say yes, you then say, so we do not have a geometric horizon then and they say yes you say welcome to flat earth their whole t the tenets of their religion is that we have geometry to the earth and their declaration that no in this instance we don't have a geometrical horizon well we must if we live on a sphere but you're saying we don't so you win or you ask them to define what looming is because that's what they're claiming it's an effect of refraction. So you ask them to, if you want to, if they just say refraction, list off all the five effects and then get them to define which effect they're talking about, most likely looming. And then get them to define looming. And you'll find that in all the descriptions, it will describe objects in the distance moving with respect to the horizon. So not the horizon looming above the horizon. That's completely non sequitur. It makes no sense. So you can't loom the horizon above the horizon. Even if they do, they're conceding they don't have a geometric sphere edge anymore. So you've won on both counts. Again, it's the recognition that you've won at that point when they start saying, we don't have a geometric edge for a horizon. You go, yeah, that's our argument. Thanks. Welcome to Flat Earth. So you've got to recognize when you've won. And you will be winning with this argument. Isn't it interesting, oh, Nathan, that they... don't understand refraction. Wow. 
Is that, does Discord not hear someone else talking, or what's going on? Yeah, I started talking at the same time. All right. It's, no, I forgot I started that statement, but it has to do with perspective. They poo-pooed perspective all this time, and now they, they want to fall in love with perspective. They love perspective now. Yeah. Not only that, they're also using the pencil in the water. Yeah, just let's get that clear okay. as well. Their, their, their mathematics is geometric. They want us to only utilize the geometric mathematics. We've been arguing for the last two years straight that we don't have geometry, that the horizon's based on perspective. And they've said, what, that's your excuse for the geometry of Earth curve getting in the way? Fluff-spective. Yeah. So, when they ask you about the perspective aspect that suddenly will be charged with not taking into account, point out that their mathematics isn't based on perspective. It's geometric, and that's what they're arguing for, us having geometry. And here we are with a black swan argument that unequivocally debunks Earth geometry. Yeah, just to all the flat earthers out there that still don't get this, don't mess with it. Grab hold of it. Use it. Debunk globe geometry with it. Black Swan. Be the Swan. Catchy though, isn't it? Black Swan. I like that a lot. It's very catchy. Black Swan. <laughs> the whispering <laughs> is catchy too. <laughs> <laughs> No, I like this argument because, like the uh, Coriolis, like it was saying, it, that you're getting them to argue against their own. It. You've got an echo. He's saying you, you, you're getting them to argue against their own rhetoric, essentially. So yesterday, because we're phrasing their use of the horizon to create a geometric edge, an orthodox comes in and says, "That sounds like a reification fallacy. You're guilty of, Mister Flat Earther." Addressed to me. And I say, no, you don't understand the argument. We're pointing out that your horizon has been a reification of the geometry of a sphere Earth model. Now, we're pointing out that we don't have a horizon that's geometric. Well, by pointing out that we don't have, it means that we, people generally, not having geometric horizons, is the contrapositive of you asserting that we do have geometric horizons. And a geometric horizon is a reification of a model. The geometry of a sphere, shockingly. That's what they're arguing for. That's what the curve calcs are. They're geometric mathematics. So once you debunk the geometric edge of their sphere, the horizon, as a geometric edge of a sphere, that's game over. The only defense is to say, no, the horizon's not an actual location. Yeah, we know. Yeah, we that's what we're arguing with you while you tell us it is geometric and is blocking buildings and is having boats go over it and is bending as you go up in altitude because they see it as a physical edge to a sphere, which it's not, as demonstrated by the black swan. So this is a pummeling beyond all pummelings. You know, it's right up there. It's top of the list with gas pressure without a container and Coriolis effect. And this is top three stuff. Number one, top of the list, is the black swan. Because what are we really arguing about? Space mm, could even argue it's a sideline argument. It's part of the heliocentric model, but we're arguing about Earth being a sphere. And we can debunk the geometry being spherical, categorically, without any rebuttal capable of offering from their side. Well, that's the black swan. It's top of the list now. You know, Black I never, swan. I never thought <laughs> Black Swan. I never thought gas pressure without a container would be relegated to a number two slot because that's awesome, and it debunks space. Me neither. Me neither. I said, I said that on the Emma show yesterday when I went on for a little bit. I said this Black Swan just took over Black number one swan. spot. I, 
it just took over gas pressure without it's funny that you say that today <laughs> I love it. It's my favourite argument. I love having the fundies tell me I'm guilty of verification because I'm turning the sphere into uh, the horizon into a sphere edge. That's what they. T that's what an orthodox told us yesterday. Uh, we're, we're, it's the, the best, epic. The best part about an orthodox, though, Nathan, is that he charged us with reifying the horizon, right? Reification fallacy on top of charging us with the black swan fallacy while he denies that the black swan. Yeah, while he's <laughs> so nice two of the fallacies ordinary. at the same time while charging us with both of them. Great. Yeah, he's charging us with the black swan fallacy, which is the ignorance black of swan. anything that anything that contradicts your standard position, which is a, for him a geometric horizon. That's the standard position. We've shown something contrary to that, and he's ignoring it. That's the black swan fallacy that he's also guilty of. Black it's comical. Swan. And then he's also claimed reification. Why? Well, because he's got a physical edge he needs to reify from his model into the horizon. We're pointing it out, and then he recognises that as us reifying the horizon. Because they're thick. They don't know where they're li the line between their argument and the debunking of it. They don't understand where the line's drawn. Notice, though, he doesn't even try to argue why the horizon is where it is. He just goes straight to, let me try to debunk the fallacy itself while committing it. What fallacy was that? Say again. Uh, what fallacy was that? Reification fallacy on top of the uh, black swan fallacy. Black swan. I just wanted to hear that part. <laughs> he just wanted the whisper. <laughs> yeah, it only works if somebody yeah. says black swan first. <laughs> black swan. <laughs> That's literally the answer to all, every time someone brings up the globe. Yep, it's got a life of its own already. <laughs> well, this is why it's important for everybody to know and understand the argument and uh, I'm glad Arwen talked to Karen B, and I hope she takes the time to listen and get the story right. I mean, that would be great for everybody. Yeah, our logo should definitely be a black swan. Black swan. The reason that their priests don't come out to aid us is because they send their little peons so they can, whatever, so they get destroyed. All or no, Discord stopped working. I think John was trying to say something. Oh, no, maybe not. Okay, John, you were coming in really low. Now, I didn't say anything. I was eating. I think they mean the John in Discord. Can you hear me now? Yes. I believe the reason that their priests never really debate us or engage with us is so that they can just burn the people in the trenches whenever they need to change their argument. Yeah, I've thought that for a while. We're arguing with the nonsense that doesn't conform with the actual religion, especially when it came to Coriolis. We'd be arguing about Earth and atmosphere travelling as one, a defiance of Coriolis effect. That's what we were arguing in the trenches. It's just to keep us occupied, because the real rhetoric is being defied by their side in their argument when they come here. Makes no sense, but exactly. We need to get bumper stickers that say Black Swans Matter. Black Swans Matter. I like that. That's a cool one. <laughs> That's very good. Yeah, someone changed their name. This thing and this the greatest. Someone in my comment section pointed out that the news is starting to refer to the coronavirus as a black swan scenario. What? <laughs> and it sounds like they're keeping up to the with the flat earth debate. I don't know. Does it di does it dilute searches yes. for our argument if it's 
labelled that way. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't give it that much thought. Oh, but... yes, it will. Absolutely. If that's something they're starting now, <laughs> uh, is... I don't know. That's a <laughs> huge red line. I want to go conspiratard, but what? <laughs> All of a sudden, that's a black swan uh, situation. Take chocolate. That's true. Chocolate. Yeah, maybe, chocolate. maybe the algorithms haven't tagged the black swan yet, so there's still a chance to get this through the black swan. I think we'd be kidding ourselves if we took any credit for that whatsoever. You don't sell yourself short. Mm. Why would we need to get credit for it? It's just that apparently this is important. Now, if we give ourselves credit for that, that's one thing. But we could just give recognition that it is uncanny, that it is suddenly being introduced, just like, remember yesterday I even mentioned... What is it now? One, two years ago, we were working uh, with the sites of Man, Isle of Man, and then somebody figured out that on, on Google uh, Earth, it, they yeah showed it behind the curve, so you can see it, and then they immediately adapted. So sure. we shouldn't be surprised at this point. Yeah, that I can buy, Wait, because also, we're, we're very specifically any... detailing a part of Google Earth that's having a change made to the very specific part we're using. Now, if you're a Google Earth dev and you happen to keep your ear to the ground about who's talking about your software then there's a highly likelihood that you'd be watching that show because we were extensively looking into google earth so that makes sense whereas a news report describing an analogy from karl popper in the same terms that we have nah, i don't think we've had any influence on that whatsoever well it no i i disagree who else ha it has been bringing this up widely like this well, there's a, in the recent few well, okay, in the well, recent I'll tell you. year. I'll tell you. Well, so when I was doing the searches recently, trying to find who's covering this subject and what they're saying about it, one of the things I came across was uh, a Korean pop band with a particular <laughs> piece of music called Black Swan. So cool. it just happens to be out there at the moment in terms of pop culture for this particular piece of music that lots of people are fans of. I'd never heard of them, just some random pop band. Nevertheless, they've got a piece of music called Black Swan. So it might be the case that people have come across that term. It's catchy. Same reason that the band used it. Where, why did they come up with that name for this piece of music? Long before we were discussing this Black Swan argument. Well, have we got it from them? Well, no, it's just, it's not that common a term, but it's, it's catchy because it's not that common. But, you know, the level of how common it is is going up by the day, it seems. Which is just a coincidence, I'm sure. But, but the timing... Come on, the timing. When when did we really start forwarding this? Was it last week? Uh, correlation. Weeks, no. just, correlation's not causation. There's no connection either between us and coronavirus. We might have mentioned it in passing on one show once. So what? There's no connection here. The Google Earth no. thing, there's a direct connection. This, there is none. No, January 2nd was the day I started with it. I don't know. I'm just approaching this as masses of information. People are at places with their heads everyone is you know everybody's always doing something they might be wasting their time they might be trying to figure things out on the internet and this just goes this is just typical the immediate response of a certain group that ha has products out there that's just it just goes to show that where their mind is likely at what is really out there in the in the ether of the mind, as it were. Ether? Yeah, it's another... <laughs> I knew you would respond to that. Uh, J January 2nd was when the Black Swan... I, I gave birth to it. Yeah, right. Well, the only correlation is that they both can go... Here of the swan. <laughs> swan. Okay, very good. Can you please not rump as 10th man, though? Thanks. Oh, I actually like that. But... Sure you do, Arwen. <laughs> you do it to me all the time. Oh my gosh, that's projection. Okay. Ah! Uh, can, can we not take it off topic Hashtag just for Arwen to moan? Black Swan. Well, black swans are quite territorial, so... I know, I hear your flap. 
<laughs> hey, I wear black, you know. Anybody's a black swan is me. I'm the exception to the rule. No, I wear black too. But actually, do you I chose called that Ernie Bird. Government organization that's listening to every show you do. Yeah, you got to change it to early swan. <laughs> well, well, I'm looking at, at uh, Google Trends. Black swan from January 5 to 11 kind of spiked up. It's also it goes from 57 all the way to 96. I don't know if that's like, what, per 100? That's, that's because chocolate. That's because Wait. chocolate said everyone in twenty four seven changed their channel name to Black Swan. <laughs> it is. Not not everybody. Hey, no. <laughs> Mine got changed. I didn't even know. I went in this morning. I was like, "Oh, I'm Chocolate Swan." Now that's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's been going around changing the Discord name, so you're Chocolate Swan now. Yeah, Chocolate Swan. Somebody changed my name. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so, Chocolate, you realize now that if something would be yours, it would be Chocolate Swans. Just so you know. Okay. You didn't catch that one? Nah, it's a little loud over here. <laughs> Anybody else caught that? Oh, dear. Uh, our, our ball is boy. Cutting us again, or <laughs> have they just all run away from? <laughs> Are they boycotting for their nonsense? <laughs> no, Bollock don't really boycott. They may say first, but they just switch to double speak. They just fight for our side of the argument because that's the only way to win, at least in their mind. Just like with the Coriolis situation, remember? That's always what they're going to end up with. They can never concede, so uh, they will literally take our side and claim it is their side. That's, just and then that's better away. than conceding. Them fighting mm -hmm. my argument and saying, no, we don't have a geometric horizon. <laughs> I love that. I live for that. <laughs> I bet you do. It is pretty unique to the globe religion, though. I haven't seen other people really do that what concede fields of argumentation concede with the opponent's argument as a defense yeah it's pretty nuts isn't it yeah <laughs> i don't know but their server lately been pretty uh, pretty busy compared to what it used to be Say that again. All right, I had to meet the native for to speak because it kind of echoes and it gives me some kind of weird reaction to hear myself speak. But um, what I'm saying is that Jen Panda's server has been pretty busy lately since uh, since the Black Swan are <laughs> damage control. No, they're just looking for answers. Exactly, damage control. <laughs> Yeah, answers they're not going to find either. <laughs> oh, how lovely. Lots of sleepless nights for the fundies. So I thought it was quite interesting the other day when um, an orthodox was on for the first time when he was accusing us of black swan fallacy and reification projection. He was talking about some very heavy conspiratard subjects and blatantly projecting his fears onto us. 
And that's the second time I've seen that happen from the Globe side. The first time was conspiracy cats being interviewed by Haunted House. And essentially, he did it in a slightly different way. So he's saying, if it was the case that the Earth was flat, then we'd all be being lied to by all of these different government agencies. So he kind of put out the same thing as an orthodox did. They're expressing their concerns and fears. And it seems like if they're, they're regular Globers that consider themselves sort of normies, albeit in this debate, then why would they be concerned with such conspiratorial subjects of deceit? It's like, well, isn't it weird that lots of people come to the flat earth subject and start branching off into these weird, stupid, conspiratorial subjects? So I think this is by design, especially as some of the people who are on our side that we're welcoming to flat earth because their own arguments are welcoming themselves to flat earth. <laughs> they're saying they're worried that there's going to be some sort of backlash from people who are literally going to come and kill them. That's their concerns. Sweet dreams, Fundy, sweet dreams. Well, well, that's kind of harsh, dude, to say that even, because you may be underestimating how real that is. I've had that fear. I even shared that. I had, like, mortal fear w to come on the scene. Oh, the fear's me. real? Yeah, of course! I'm not saying the fear's not real. I heard them talking about it. That's what I'm saying. The fear's very much real in these, these Fundy Globe heads. They got a religion, <laughs> and they're worried about Come the consequences. But they're still Fuck's sake, Arwin, shut up! They've got a religion, and they're worried about the consequences of leaving their own cult. That's what they're expressing to us. Their fears are that there'll be repercussions if they leave the cult of Globe. Right. So, so what do you think is stronger, the fear of it, or the the necessity yeah, to man. know what's going on? Because I feel like if so many of these guys are so afraid of this topic and you know what what it means, why why are you even involved in it? Is it is the, the necessity to know what's going on in the topic overcome the fear and make you come in here and say every day for five years, oh, flat Earth is dead. And then five years later, you're still in the same chat talking about Flat Earth is dying. <laughs> I mean, it's funny dynamic to me. Scared of losing their money. Being funded. Just denial. It's the denial stage of loss. They've obviously, uh, even if it's at a subconscious level, recognized that they've that they've lost something. So they're basically in the first stage of that appreciation. So what is it? Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. So they're just in denial. But this is this is why we need to be nice and let them share their pain. We can't. Well, share can't their pain and make them realize their all... loss. Their loss is that by being in this subject, even at a subconscious level, they're going to recognize the contradictions within their own zealotry. That's going to be painful cognitively. So they look for a way to deny it. Here you go, I've got a white swan, the earth to globe for another day. Well, why do they need to convince themselves that the globe is real for another day? Well, because at a subconscious level, they realize it isn't. And they wouldn't be here arguing to convince themselves it's still a sphere if they didn't, at a subconscious level, at the very least, realise that it's not a sphere. If you were content, Chocolate, you've said this loads of times, they wouldn't be, they'd be getting on with their merry day. They wouldn't be here arguing about it, looking for affirmation of sphereedom. They wouldn't need to. You'd just know, and that would be it. Ah, oh, these people. And that's how most people treat us. Until they get into an argument with us. And then suddenly something gets rewired and they need to start to go through those five stages of loss. The first being denial. Yep. But I like it when that first stage manifests as a denial that affirms our position. No, it's not a geometric edge of a sphere. Booyah! <laughs> Welcome to Flat Earth. Excellent denial. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I've never argued for the geometric horizon to be physical. Never, ever, ever. Exactly. Don't, Booyah! Don't, don't you are mind flat the earther. thousands of Ballalong. hours you have. <laughs> Sorry, David. That was my bad. Yeah, if you've no, never... Say, don't, don't mind the thousands of hours you have. <laughs> Every... What? 
Radio check. Hello. Coming in. Hi. Hello. Hi. Chocolate. Hey, buddy. Are, are you ready? Because we're getting ready to talk. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. For goodness sake. <laughs> I'm on mute. That's a wrap. <laughs> That's a wrap. I'm shocked I got that out. Jeez. Yeah, give it another month or so and we'll have it. We'll, the only problem we'll have is explaining to flat earthers where they've actually won and don't realize it. Not a bad, not a bad problem to have, I would say. I, I'd suggest for flat earthers to start up in their game. That would be my suggestion. Yeah, I think you're right. There's going to be an expectation from here on in that these arguments can be killed quickly and efficiently without circle jerking around with curve calculators and assumptions of spherical horizons. All that stuff needs killing quickly and that's going to be the expectation. So those of you who are out there in these forums debating endlessly for hours with the begging the question fallacy that's in place from the globe side, you're going to be frowned upon. You, know, you are going to have to up your game. That's the consequence, unfortunately. Yeah, but they got to keep doing what they always do. All right, let me you again. So it's just start trying to stay away from that conversation, trying to just, you know, obfuscate and go to something else and not actually addressing. No, we're talking about flat earthers, not, yeah, the not the boneheads. We're talking about flat earthers. We don't care what they do. They can't do anything. All they can do is try and obfuscate at home. That's it. So what you do is you expose them quickly with the black swan. It's too easy. It's over in less than a minute. Black swan. <laughs> Fear the swan. Oh, I'll be going over the black swan again on my show today. Like I said, I made a promise that every time I go live, I will be going over the black swan. So today's the black swan, and then we're going to deal with alleged Bible contradictions. It's going to be a good show. Jamie didn't say it on the live show because this goes out after. Okay, can you go live again right now? No. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't say it on the last show because Arwen started the monologue. I had a subject I had to deal with. It took precedence over, you know, shameless plugs. How did I know that was coming? Nothing is more important than shameless plugs. Feel free. No, no, QV said that he had something more pressing. Yeah, I needed to say the prosecution rests. Get that, make sure everyone understood that. I, uh, I figured everyone got it, you know, but, you know, sometimes when I figure everyone's got something, it doesn't pan out that way. Nathan, you said something. Uh, that resonates. They live with contradictions. We don't. So on the subconscious level, they not. We lost it there. Tenth. Radio check. Anyone yeah, out there? I still hear you. Just hand man dropped. Yeah, we lost time. Oh, okay. Man down. Swan down. <laughs> I 
So do you change your prediction? Do you still think it'll be nine months before the fundies fully get it? I'm going further. 12 months for them to understand. I'm just saying to understand the argument, not to have a, a reasoned rebuttal. This is just to understand the argument. So 2021 before they understand it and realize. Yeah, that I would say so. Yeah, collectively, yes. So by 2021, they'll collectively realize they've got no argument. Their geometry has been defeated. They're guilty of reification because of the argument. Because those are the implications. If you understand the argument, you understand the implications also. Now I put it like that, I think you're right. <laughs> Take about a year. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been out there listening to these people? Yeah, I search for it daily. <laughs> So it's this topic. Yeah. Yeah. And and you're you're surprised I up my prediction. <laughs> no, initially, initially it was just cluster screw. Nobody understood it on their side. None of them. It got worse. At, at the start, not not only did they not understand the modus tollens, they didn't understand the analogy. A lot of them still don't. And then one of them, I guess, decided, oh, look, Black Swan is a fallacy. They're, they're, they're guilty of the fallacy. <laughs> Let's not understand what the fallacy is and see if it applies to us. Let's just say it's a fallacy because they're using the terminology Black Swan. <laughs> Morons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, boy. Yeah, I think I might see your 12 months and raise you another two months on top of that, John. I don't know. <laughs> At this rate. <laughs> wow. I predict that a lot of people are going to be talking about black swans, but probably a sizable majority will not actually be getting the concept. So yeah, that so goes it might take saying. A, a couple of years. That's what we're saying. We're saying for the next... According to Chocolate, 14 months. <laughs> They're going to be talking about it and not understanding it. Um, I, I'd say make that uh, like rather 40 months. It's going to take a while. It doesn't, nah. have, to take, it doesn't have to take that long uh, with people on our side if oh. they're willing to. I'm trying to talk, Arwen. doesn't have to take that long with people on our side if we spend the time explaining to them we have enough videos out there but they have to take the time to learn it now it will take a lot of time if they don't do their due diligence so it's just a matter of them applying themselves to know how to address this argument the way it was presented and they won't if they don't take that time then it's never going to happen who are you talking about flat earthers or baltards Flat earthers who will not take the time to learn something, but take all the time to address it and say, well, I really don't know it, but I'm not going to take the time to learn it. Well, I'm, I'm asking them to take the time to learn it because we're all on supposedly the same side. So let's use this machine gun that we have and put the bow and arrows down. We've got a ball killer here. Let's all get on it and kill this ball. Black Swan. Hashtag same team Black Swan. Black Swan. I could give you a perfect life's example of what's going on. When I was in sales training and marketing, we would train the agents on how to overcome commonly uh, spoken objections for the purchase of the product they were selling. And, and we would teach them how to overcome the objections. And every now and then someone would come back from the field with an objection we never heard. And then we would take the time and formulate an answer for it. And we would train hours and hours and hours on this to where it was second nature. Now, if you believe in your product and someone brought up that objection, you wouldn't even have to think twice. You just just rolled off your lips. But we had to take the time to train. So 
some people's sales went up and other people stayed the same and was trying to figure out why theirs went up and the other. Well, we found out they weren't doing it the way they were taught. Gee, I wonder what's happening. Yeah, the fact that you and Nathan both have that sales background exactly what it is. It takes it makes it a lot easier. Uh, is there any ballers in Discord? No, nah, they in got they all got swan flu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the feedback is so away. Swan flu. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, we haven't got Highlander. Hey, Highlander. Highland? That's the only baller in there? Yeah. Is there anyone actually, after time, prepared to put a reasonable defense up or at least express their argument? I won't call it a reasonable defense. <laughs> <laughs> let me go in there and let's evaluate this. All right. One second. I'll get right back to you. <laughs> the swan scared them away to the other debate shows where they're discussing Coriolis. <laughs> you got loads of ballers in there. We got Roger MC. This clown never comes off mute, though. I don't even know why he's out. Phil Mitchell. He never he never speaks. He's a keyboard warrior. Most of these people are keyboard warriors. They won't they won't speak. Um. Emma, no, nah, she's flat earth. Um. <laughs> so, QE, when you refer to keyboard warriors, is that a particular type? But um, bump. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I think you're right, Nathan. About what? Highlander, he's the only one that has the uh, intestinal fortitude to come off mute. Right, I agree. Uh, we have the Nidhug. He's on Deafen, though. Why do you come into a uh, hangout and go on Deafen? He's the one that had a problem with the difference between references and citations. Your yeah, buddy. I remember. Yeah, you cited Andrew Young, therefore everything Andrew Young's ever said about refraction-based looming must hold true in your world, QE. But you know how it works. You've got to hold that shit dear to your heart. <laughs> you remember that show, Jose Retard? you got to yeah. hold that stuff dear to your heart. <laughs> I like it. You can take it to, to I near absurdity with a dictionary. So you're going to get a dictionary definition. And some Muppet comes along and goes, hang on a second, in this dictionary it says Earth's a sphere. <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> That's not how this works. Yeah, yeah that was a fun uh, presentation right there. Oh, we got a snowstorm coming in. Since there's nothing else to talk about, might as well talk about a snowstorm. I love snowstorms, man. This love one's it. like snow. The, the black swans like snow. That's a good darn question. I've seen black swans in snow. Beautiful, by the way. I think black swans in snow get very self-conscious, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Wow. Wits it, gets it, or is that the one uh, person you were talking about before, Nathan? Yes. He said he was a Globebuster and that he'd been discussing it or would be discussing it on the next Globebusters. He, he just came off mute. Go ahead, sir. What's going on? What's going on? Yeah, I just, uh, I'm new on Discord, but I, I heard y'all talking about it and figured I could, uh, Offer a little little mediation. Ah, an arbiter. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't on the last show, so. 
I'll have to bring it up next week. Thanks, sir. But I will say, I think it's, I mean, obviously a brilliantly put together argument and analogy. Well, thank you. Yes, sir. You you were in there in 24-7 earlier, right? That was you? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you gave a pretty good breakdown of the argument, so kudos to you for that. That's why I dropped it in the chat immediately, because I came in and I heard you. So I had you back with that. Okay, you were the one that dropped the picture. Yeah, nice, nice. Would you be willing yeah. to break it down again? Yeah, sure. S simply, um, you know, there, there has to be a physical geometric horizon based on the imposed radius. So the apparent horizon refutes the globe. Uh, I'm not really sure what's not being understood. The historicity of the analogy, of course. Um, but I didn't listen to the Globebuster show. Um, I, did, I didn't even think we were doing it. So I just heard y'all talking about it, and I was like, oh, well, I know in, in the private discussions, we were showing love to the black swan analogy. So I would have to clear, clarify it on air. Thanks. Yeah, what's not to get? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. We, uh, ben actually presented with a similar video uh, from maybe three, four weeks ago, like the first episode I was on. And uh, we, all, we all right there were like, well, this is a death blow. But, I, of course, the black swan is so beneficial because of the analogous benefits. And it's such a concise, straight-to-the-point death blow. I don't, of course, we should all get behind it. Nathan, bro, you got brutal. Which Nathan? Me. I, I didn't even hear one. Which Nathan's got bad feedback? It, it was the feedback. You, Nathan, uh, um, uh, every time we speak, it comes back with the feedback. Now it's not doing it. It was only on Discord, but now it's, it's not. Yeah, I had some problems with that, too, getting on Discord. That's why I left. So if something's up. Okay, I'll have a fiddle. It's been like that all morning, but it seems to have stopped now. I think it's had an overhaul or something, because as I say, the... Oh, okay, yeah, all my devices are set to default. That's probably why. Can you all still hear me on Discord? Yes, yes, we hear you. Is that any better? Yes, it, it, it suddenly stopped doing the echo. Okay. I think oh, there it goes. Okay. What'd you do, Nathan? It's just all set to default settings, so because I started using the app, I just changed it back to the desk correctly. That was all. Uh, that going to help me out. Thanks! <laughs> I'm just hoping the normal way of using it will return tomorrow because I don't like using the app. It's just not as it's not as friendly. Anyway. Any more to add on the black swan? Cosmonaut yeah. says, I think Black Swan is a social experiment. Social experiment? Testing the comprehensive, comprehensive skills of people. Yeah, I'd like to add to the Black Swan. Ballers are running away. Good. All, all I heard all this time prior to the Black Swan was boats are disappearing over the curve. And now they got rid of the curve and say it's an apparent horizon. So what have they actually done? They've relinquished what their own geometry. They... What's that? 
Perfect. They've cons- Go ahead. Go ahead. They've conceded the point. Yeah. To defend the argument, they have to concede that we don't live on a sphere and we're not governed by spherical geometry. So yeah, absolutely correct. With that, I'm going to say another huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who tuned in on the Nathan Oakley premiering stream for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Also, of course, a massive thank you to all of today's Discord and G Plus panels for making this after show possible. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!